Good afternoon, everyone. It is Stephen and Andrea from Pin in the Atlas. Look at this backdrop. Real thick. There's water over there. Looks like the bayou. So with a landscape like this, you know we got to be way out in the middle of nowhere. And we must have something good. Otherwise, why would we be out here? So what are we doing out here and what are we going to go see? We are deep in the heart of the Angelina Forest in eastern Texas and we are in search of the Aldridge Sawmill or the remains of the Aldridge Sawmill. Let's explore. So a gentleman by the name of Hal Aldridge built this sawmill back in 1903 and it used to produce 125,000 board feet of lumber every single day and employed 500 people. Now at that time there was housing, a hotel, a post office, blacksmith, even a train depot and two schools with shops and saloons. Unfortunately the only remains we could find were that of the sawmill. Let's take a look. Now it's time to wander inside. Just take a look at some of these windows here. Let me see if I can get a better. They still got oh, the sun's right in that one, of course. There. All the wood framing around is still in the window. That's nice to see. You see a lot of the these vines growing up the wall. And all the plant life growing up along the roof line. Just makes it that much more aesthetically pleasing, doesn't it? One thing that doesn't, obviously. There's all this graffiti. It just takes away from the, the building, in our opinion. And I won't try to focus on it too much. A lot of it's misspelled, which just goes to show the level of intelligence required to pick up a spray paint can. Look at this. It's a shame the roof's collapsed. But see all these concrete buildings way out here. There's a lot of moisture in this area. I guess you can feel it in the ground. So a lot of the wood, there was a fire here that went through and destroyed a lot of the buildings. But with concrete, it can withstand quite a bit. It's just gorgeous looking, isn't it? So we'll take a peek inside this building here. I like the little alleyway here between them. And you can see some of the structural steel visible. make this build to last. Let's see if we can walk around to the front side. See more of the the moss growing up and on the walls. I hope that ends up taking over and covering up a lot of this paintwork here. Look 
at that. I like the ivy coming down the sides of the buildings. I love that. I think you can hear the crunching of all the leaves on the ground. It is winter time. what would have been in this building but look at the look at the size of the bolts embedded in the cement here I mean that's a uh, that's pretty big so let's go walk around there's another building you can just see through that window Go see what that one is back there. Now this building here, since it's still really intact, very cool in here. Sorry the video quality is going to be a little bit different in here because it's so dark. Look at the height on these ceilings. You can see some of the the cement finish is crumbling down off the roof line there. So there is one more piece that we found outside. Not sure what the building is. Because like Andrea mentioned, there was a train depot here. So we haven't been able to really locate that. Ooh. Take a look at this. Is that a hobbit home? It doesn't have a doorway. Watch that huge spider. Where? Where? <laughs> Not funny. last remains that we spotted when we were scouting around. So like we mentioned earlier, not sure if this could be the train depot or if this was another part of the mill. But it's kind of spooky. 
almost look like gravestones, don't they? Alright, I've scouted out ahead to make sure there are no spiders so I could continue filming in peace with my heart rate at normal. Now it makes sense that this could be the train depot. Uh, one, I mean, see here these pillars, they've got uh, the embeds in there, the bolts still in there coming through. So this could have been like a raised platform. And also because of its location fairly close to the mill, we just haven't been able to find out where the train tracks could have been. You know, there's a, a lot of, a lot of nature that's taken back over. This place was abandoned quite a while ago, so remnants that aren't strong, made of cement, I mean even even those are crumbling away, so. And this is the end of the building. That's it. And then here, you can see how close the mill is. So if there are more pieces out here underneath the growth, they're very well hidden now. Here right in front of the mill site, look at this lovely little pond. I say it's winter time, so could you imagine what it looked like when all these plants had leaves on them? And it was green. All right, everyone, that's going to wrap up this video. Um, I was expecting there to be a little bit more to this because this Aldridge, it was a town. Mm -hmm. I know this, the sawmill, those remains are amazing. I just thought there would be um, a little bit more to explore. Yeah, considering there were schools and saloons and shops and everything. But there were two fires, one in 1911 and a second one in 1914, I believe. So, and you never know, people might have just taken the bricks, dismantled their houses and took them with them. Yeah, if it's been abandoned for over a hundred years. Yeah, it was abandoned in 1920. Yeah. And nature likes to take over, so. Um... That and the graffiti artists. Yeah. On that note, get out there, get exploring, go put another pin in the atlas. And we will see you on our next adventure. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.